Hey everyone, so this week we're going on another adventure. This time I'm taking my dad, Don, with me. We are headed out on the highway first thing tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., bright and early, and we have about a 13 hour drive ahead of us as we head back to that really cool scrapyard that I went to in Manitoba. So he had lots of cool stuff last time. I couldn't afford it all and I didn't have room for it all, but there are a few other things he's got, including a really neat 1960s Sears drag bike. That if you haven't seen them, they look like an old uh, rail dragster, really neat. So I'm gonna head back on the highway tomorrow morning. So follow along and see what uh, adventure awaits. I don't even know what's gonna happen. So we're gonna find out, so stay tuned. So it's just a little bit before 6 a.m. I gotta go pick up my dad. It is dark, clearly. It's cold and it's raining, so um, yeah, not really missing much of the day today. Here comes my dad. You ready for a big adventure? You got your bag all packed and everything? Alright, load it up. Off we go. So I've just stopped to fill up with some gas. My dad's gone inside to grab a table for us. We're gonna grab a bite to eat. We're in the town of Lloydminster. It sits on the border of Saskatchewan and Alberta. I'm filling up on the Alberta side because our gas is a little bit cheaper here. Um, Alberta is home of a lot of oil refineries, so gas is probably about 10 cents cheaper than if I went to the other side of town. Um, this is one of few towns that sits on a border that isn't a twin city, like um, Vancouver, Washington, and Portland, Oregon. Like, those are uh, twin cities, more or less. Um, this, they just have to figure it out, I guess, who pays what taxes and all that. Um, I'm gonna grab a bite to eat, and then we're gonna head back on the road. And food has arrived. <laughs> we're gonna dig in here. Was there ever anybody that was kind of sketchy or scary that picked you up or what was the weirdest person that ever picked you up hitchhiking? I had a drunk in a, I think a 57 or 58 Cadillac and he had a few people that were hitchhiking in the car and he was driving and he was drunk. Did he like swerve me all over the road? And stuff? Yeah and this was going across the Rogers Pass. That's like the pretty high up in the mountains, right? Yeah, very dangerous road. And so the other guys and myself uh, tried to coerce him into uh, stopping, but he was uh, convinced that um, he could drive, but we made it. So, like, how long of a trip was that? Driving with this drunk guy in his Cadillac? I think he. Finally passed out about just pulled the car over I think and bam kicked everybody out and went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well it's probably good for everybody in the car. <laughs> Surprise you survived, but things were different back then, didn't you? You hitchhiked in the back of a cherry truck, didn't you? Yeah, that was in BC. And you got to eat all the cherries you could handle? It was a really nice old fruit farmer. And they had gone to uh, Kelowna to pick up a Suzuki 50 for their son who was following behind them so they were driving slowly and they had all freshly picked cherries in the back of the truck. It was uh, you know, about a two-ton truck with a big load. Go ahead, you're hungry, you can eat all the cherries you want. <laughs> and so I did, I just gorged myself on these cherries. Not realizing what they would do to me. Yeah, and how stomach sick were you after that? Um, well, finally he turned off to go to his farm. And there was a little gas station there. They didn't have indoor plumbing. They just had a little outhouse out back. And I bolted for that. And it was filled with wasps and bees. And Oh, no. Every kind of poison thing that could sting you was in that stinky place. <laughs> terrible experience. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like the first half of the trip was maybe good and then it went south in a hurry. <laughs> yes, it did. We are just making our way through Saskatchewan, getting close to the Manitoba border. Saskatchewan 
they say is so flat you can watch your dog run away for three days. You believe it looking at that landscape. Okay, so we're here um, at our first destination. Uh, a fellow that I know has some old signs and stuff you might want to sell. He's not here, he's actually out working in his field. He's a farmer, so that's what he does. But he's giving me permission to go out in the property and have a look at a couple things, and I'm gonna send him a picture, and with any luck, I'll be able to buy some stuff today. Uh, his wife's home, so hopefully we can figure it out. So my dad has opted to stay in the car, um, probably a little comfier in there, so I'm going to go dig inside that building right there and see if we can find something cool. Okay, so we're going to have a peek inside a little granary here. Now I was in here uh, once before with them and I remembered seeing some cool stuff. You kind of see there's a BA oil seal, Red Rose tea box, nice purity 99 bucket, a decent, you know, it needs to be clean, but a white rose bucket. White rose grease. Oh, here's an old one. What's this? Spitfire 6 volt battery. That's got to be an old timer. Okay. I mean, there's just stuff everywhere. That looks like a North Star can, Canadian company. Some antifreeze. So I was going to ask him about this old display case as well as some of these cans that are in here. But look at the old, the Cockshut Farm Equipment sign. There's train lights, it's a Purity 99 sign over there. Polarine box. What's left of a Coke sign. So I got to send him a couple pictures and see if we can't figure out a deal over the phone here. And sometimes you gotta dig in these situations too, because there might be other good stuff. What I see here is a telephone flange. And I'm gonna see if I can dig that out and maybe make an offer on this guy here, but I gotta unbury it first. And it is buried at the bottom. This is actually an old CIL box too. That's kind of a neat piece. I've got guys that collect CIL stuff too, but I'm gonna try and get to this sign here first. Hey Dad, decided to peek your decided to peek your head in the door? Yeah, I just wanted to see what he's got in here. Oh, there's all kinds of neat stuff. Oh yeah, lots of cool old cans and stuff like that. So I just got to give him a call and uh, see if we can figure something out on some of this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to try and uh, crawl my way out of the shed here. Uh, I'm going to try and make a deal on some of this stuff. Not everything is for sale, so keep that in mind that, you know, if you see this and you think it's super cool and I shouldn't walk away from it, um, the guy also collects too, so not everything is going to be for sale, but hopefully I can get a couple cool pieces and bring it back to the shop. I'm going to have one last look because, you know, you just hate to miss anything cool in here. So, because there's been some kind of good stuff buried. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible. But as you can see, it's kind of piled in here really high. It's kind of a nice box. Thought it would have been a good can in there too. So let's see if there's anything under here. Okay, I've got some stuff set out. That's kind of neat. The clouds. And I haven't seen one before, so sometimes the time to buy it is when you haven't seen it. What I've done is I basically put a variety of stuff next to my van, sent a picture off to him, and uh, we're going to try and hammer out a price. So hopefully it'll all work out and I'll go home with some cool stuff. And we've arrived at uh, Thirsty's Flea Market. We're going to go check out a little store in the basement called the Vinyl Dungeon as well and see what they have. My dad is a big record collector, so hopefully there's something fun there for him too. We'll see if there's some records down here. Oh, 
Hey, Dad, do you remember these hand puppets? They had the cloth body. You used to have some like that, I think, right? I still do. I'm just looking at the signs over here. So there's signs and all kinds of cool stuff everywhere. I'm gonna look for advertising clocks and see what else is neat around here. And for a flea market, I find every time I come here, there's something really cool to walk away with, and the deals are not bad either. In fact, a lot better than some of the antique stores. So let's have a further look around and see if I can find some treasures to bring back home to the shop. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Oh sure, yeah, I got a, I got a handful here. Yeah, five bucks each. It looks like there's a few in here I might be able to pick up. So we just got back from the flea market. Um, I managed to get that big box of dinky toys from the fellow that was there, and they were a pretty good price. Some really rare ones were in there too, like the old. Um, there's a, a Regent tanker truck and some other cool stuff. Now condition wasn't great again, but you know they can be restored, or some people like them like that. So. Uh, it's always good to have stuff around the shop that's of different prices. My dad got a couple records. Um, what did you get, Dad? I got the uh, first Canadian issue of a Beatles album called Beatlemania. And what was the other one? Uh, Chubby Checker. Okay. So a couple of uh, record scores for my dad there. The first Beatles record and um, Chubby Checker album. So we're going to try and track down a record store, which is supposed to be just up the road here. And uh, I hear they've got some really cool stuff. So we're going to go and see what they have and then uh, move on to our next location. So this place is called the Sound Exchange. Uh, it's downtown Winnipeg. And it's just crazy and packed full of all kinds of cool records and vintage gear. Um, so we're going to head inside and have a look. Everywhere. Tars. Let me go explore downstairs here. Basement. Down I go. So you just never know what you're gonna find down in a basement like this. And there's so much cool stuff upstairs. You can only expect there to be some cool stuff down here too. Oh my goodness. There are records upon records. I mean, holy cow, look at all the vinyl down here. And it looks to me like this might be some good stuff too, like this, you know, Jefferson Airplane. Mitch Ryder. Boy, would it ever take some time to go through all this. I'm gonna skim the surface here. This is just about a reason to come back, just to dig through this basement. Oh look, old water skis. It 
stage lights. stuff like puppets and toys and things down here too so old mic stand that's kind of cool actually an old microphone stand I like that amplifiers see if we get the flashlight going again here there we go Wow, there is, let's see if I can get his flashlight working. There is a, a windy path that goes around the basement here. And I'm gonna try my luck and see what I can see. Of all the crazy things, I found a unicycle down here. So I'm gonna haul that upstairs and see if we can't agree on that. I mean, I know there's probably tons of great records down in this basement, but I'm looking more for the antique -y type things. And there's collectibles packed pretty much in every square inch of this place. You really have to look to see the good stuff. Talk to the owner, and he's a really nice guy and happy to show you around. After an exhausting day on the road, it's time to go grab a bite to eat. My dad's just paying up for his records inside, and um, I have to load all this stuff in, uh, make sure it's all ready to go for the road. Next stop, we're going to head up to the famous Red Top Diner for a classic burger and fries. Well, you haven't been here in a while. So, pretty big day. Um, yesterday was a lot of driving. Today was a lot of hunting around for stuff. Um, looking forward to eating. We're going to grab some ice cream after this and head back to the hotel. So, yeah, long day. So, just checking out of the hotel now. I'm going to go next door to my dad's room and knock on it. and. Take him down to the car. I was up all last night. I was sick. I don't know what you guys take when you're sick. Um, gas station here had this, which is Buckley's. It's like some of the worst tasting medicine, but it actually does work. In fact, I think that's pretty much their slogan. So um, I'm going to try and heal up this morning. I had like no sleep last night. So this will be a fun drive considering it's another 12, 13 hours to go. But um, we're going to bear with it and go get my dad and head back on the highway. Oh, good morning, Dad. Here, let me give you a hand. Let me grab that for you. So you ready to go? All ready. And the town of Verdon, one of the reasons of popping in here, too, is that they still have their old train station. You can see just a really nice old building, historic. Not too many of these small town train stations left, and this one's still right where it's at. Beautiful old building. Kind of see out my window there and there's big plumes of smoke coming right from the downtown and that was right where we're headed oh yeah it looks like a big fire oh dear it looks like one of the historic buildings here in downtown Verdon has caught on fire Looks like a pretty big one too. We're gonna kind of go around this way here. Yeah, it's a short building. And we don't want to get too close and get in the way of the workers over there. And it looks kind of like the whole town has come out to see what's going on with the fire here. It looks like a historic block in their downtown has caught on fire, probably about three buildings or so. I don't think we'll be going down that way to look for anything cool today. So I'll head back out of town and get back on the highway. And as we're driving along, we come across these really shortened telephone poles. I mean, they only had to be three feet off the ground. So strange. So I am back at the shop and it is packed in here. I've got so much work I have to do, um, stuff I have to put away, but I got some really neat stuff and I'm really happy with uh, some of the stuff we picked up on the road trip. Let me show you some of the things I got and um, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty neat. So a couple of vintage turntables, uh, both dual, so German made, some old oil cans, 
There's an old Husky oil can, that's quite an old one. Um, old model kits from the 60s, still in the boxes. Uh, more oil cans, some old uh, talking G.I. Joes. There are antique fans and old toy trucks. Um, this is a really neat piece. This is an old 1920s movie projector. That was a good find. Um, got that at the uh, antique mall. The old automotive paint clock, Crosley dashboard radios, mass toys. I remember those when I was a kid. Um, cool old thermos. So just lots and lots of stuff. This was a neat piece too, actually. It is the Space Ranger. Put out by Marks. It's basically like this big giant set that you set up and it uh, takes off and has rocket ships. It's really cool. Um, also got some old signs. This was a neat one. Uh, Canadian Pacific Air. So it's actually two part sign. There's two big pieces there. Uh, those big Coke signs that I got. Sims Service. Sims Gasoline was uh, in the US and Texas, I believe. And there's a carousel horse, some old guitars. So lots and lots of cool stuff. Lots of old dinky and corgi toys and um, you know, Shadow One, I believe that one is. So lots of cool things. So thanks for watching. I hope you like these videos. If you do, subscribe. If you don't, subscribe too. Um, heck, just hit subscribe. Um, follow along because we're putting out these videos basically every week or so when I go on adventures like this. Um, you can also check us out on our website, which is curiosityedmonton.ca. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.